Hey guys, what's going on? So we're back again today with part three of this how to convert any mountain bike into an e-bike. The back wheel already is fitted in part one. If you haven't watched that, go back and watch that video. Part two, we fitted the display and throttle control, etc. Now hopefully this is the third and final instalment today of fitting the battery, controller, doing all the cable tied in and actually getting this out for a test run. So. Right guys, I think I've got pretty much most of the stuff I'm going to use. Um, there might be stuff missing as I go. Starting off with some Allen keys around. It's an absolute must. This is some self-adhesive tape which I use to mount the controller externally. I'll explain why I do that in a bit. Shed load of cable ties. You don't need quite this many but it's always good to have some extra cable ties. Got some little clips in here which I use to mount the uh, cables to the frame. Just runs it a bit tidier. And we've got the uh, 1500 watt, 52 volt, 17 and a half amp hour battery. And the controller, which I've gave a very light coat of Hammerite direct to metal. Doesn't require any primer, spray paint, just a light blow over just to color code it. I just prefer it aesthetically. Looks, uh, looks a lot better in my, in my view, it looks a lot better on the bike. There may be other things, but you'll see as we go. So we're going to get started straight away with fitting the battery and seeing how much room we've got in the frame triangle. I've had a huge influx of people like with a really positive response over these how to build an e-bike series. I would say about 95% of them are not subscribed so if you are watching this it really helps out the channel massively. I can do much much more projects and have a uh, you know a bit of a budget to start. I can have a little bit of a budget to start doing some other projects as well help you guys out. This video today is sponsored by OutdoorMasters.com. I recently did a review on their electric longboard which was really cool. Um, if you haven't watched that already go check out that video. These sunglasses I'm wearing are from Outdoor Masters. They do a whole range of sports and outdoor stuff. I've got a paddle board which I need to review from them this week so subscribe for notifications if you want to see that and yeah it's a proper nice day mr kirby's on his way down um so i'm going to try and get this bike built so we can uh, both go out for a little ride fingers crossed everything's going to go smoothly on this bike and we should be out on it the battery's charged there's no reason why this shouldn't be up and running today and um yeah hopefully get out for a ride on it and be the third and final installment so let's get straight into it Alrighty, righty Let's start getting this thing converted and finished. Starting off with the um, removing the bottle cage holder bolts. So what I probably normally do as well is these two for the bottle holder on the back. I'll remove them just to just to give us extra room to fit everything. They're not going to be needed because we use up all the space in the frame triangle pretty much, and I want to run the cables either up this tube, probably on this side. So. Get rid of these and lose these. Not going to be needed, these ones. And these are the ones that are going to be used to secure the battery. We just set these screws aside for this moment. You can see there the battery comes with the uh, keys to lock it taped on the base. I'm just going to remove them. I'm going to put the key in actually immediately so I can slide it off the base. The batteries come with this plate at the bottom which the battery slides on and off of, I'll show you in a moment. But I'm going to install it so this cable, this cable end comes out of the bottom here. I don't want it up there coming all the way back down. It's just going to come down here and run up there. So put the key in the battery. Alright, hopefully you can see that. There's lock symbol here and an unlock symbol this way. I'm going to turn it towards the unlock. And I'm going to push with my thumbs to slide that off the base. There you go. This is the part we want. I can pretty much do this by eye and get it right most of the time. Yeah, you don't want it all the way down there. You know, the battery's not going to go unless it's going to hit a derailleur. Leave, leave a little bit of space here. Um, not too far up this way because you haven't got the height to get the battery on. So somewhere about in the middle, roughly. You can always put it on and check. I'm going to guess about here. You can always test it out and move it if need be, but I'm just going to nick this up because if you try putting the battery on without the screws tightened, it can end up getting a bit stuck. All right, so that's tight enough to check out the positioning. I've got a little bit of space here. I've got plenty of space so it doesn't hit the frame triangle there. 
the battery goes on the battery goes on slightly um, off center upwards and then slides down into place I'll show you what I mean here so you need to bear that in mind you need the extra room you can see there it's not quite level but I'll drop it on slide it back and that's perfect yeah that's really good position is good there's plenty of room to slide it um, I'd rather have the weight slightly down this way but again I don't want it so close that there's no room to run the cables that is absolutely perfect enough room to slide it off yeah giant talon good frame for fitting this kit this is only a size medium frame fits nicely what I'm going to check whilst I'm here I'm going to take this off and tighten them allen keys up a little bit is the controller fitment alright guys let's talk controllers this is my biggest bone of contention I think it's a bad idea personally do whatever you like to fit the controllers in the bags that come in the kits I know that's what comes with the kits but in my own personal experience the main thing that I see go wrong with kits is people putting the controllers in a bag running the kit hard and overheating the controller yeah overheating controllers is the number one issue I see now that can be avoided by number one having cooling I mount these on the outside people are like oh is it not like waterproof well nothing really on an electric bike is 100% waterproof you're not going to go diving under the sea in it are you I mean it's in a sealed metal box it you know I would rather run the risk of water ingress than overheating because overheating is by far the number one issue that I see yeah mounting the controller externally is going to eradicate most of the overheating issues it still comes down to common sense uh, it's no different to like a food processor in the kitchen or a food blender you're not going to turn a smoothie mixer on stick ice in it and run it for like an hour flat out it's going to overheat it's an electric motor got to use an element of common sense just because you bought an e-bike and it's expensive doesn't mean it should go underwater and be all right in the sea doesn't mean there's no risk of it overheating so it's you know it's an expensive investment like these e-bikes so take care of it keep an eye on things keep an eye on the temperature if you live in the place where it's very hilly you're putting in no effort to pedal the weight of the rider when i ride an e-bike i'll bring the throttle on take the throttle off pedal a little bit i'll give it you know i ride it in a way where i'm not just constantly putting 100 percent pressure on the bike all the time Ride it as you will, it's your choice. I prefer fitting these on the outside, having plenty of ventilation, and that way it's easy to keep an eye on the temperature of things. And yeah, just ride with some common sense. It's an expensive investment, all I'm saying is try and look after it. And this is the way I fit it, so totally down to you. Right, just gonna whip this battery off. Tighten up these screws, just make sure they are tight. Happy with the position of it, so this is on. That's on, that's not going anywhere. Battery back on. Right, at this point, I am gonna lock the battery. You can take it out if you want, but I get anxiety about losing the key, so probably gonna just leave it in. But yeah, that's now locked in place. It won't slide out. You turn the key back that way, it slides on and off. On. Right, I'm just going to turn my attention now to we've got the cable that I've run in the previous videos past the crank and we've got the battery cable these I'm going to run up to about here on the seat post tube of the frame um, I'll normally take both cables together and just start trying to grab a cable tie feed it around, watch the derailleur right now I'll just manipulate these cables to where I want them Start tightening it up. I'm making sure I pull the cable tight around the crank so there's no there's no chance of this cable coming loose and getting in the way of the pedals. That's my aim here. Just gonna put one more just gonna put one more cable tie a little bit further up. All I'm doing at this point is kind of directing any of the existing cables that need to go. The controller is going to be in this area and the cables are going to be in this area of the frame triangle. So I'm just running things roughly up into that area and yeah I think I'm quite happy with that. So I've got the cable coming from the electric hub wheel around the crank, we run that in the uh, first video. Pulled that tight 
and tied it alongside the cable from the battery and now I'm just going to snip off the towel ends be really careful not to catch any cables or brake lines etc etc snip that one there and there you go that's run that's run up to there I'm just going to run any cables into this area now so that's a battery cable to go to the controller this is a hub wheel phase cables um, hall sensor cables I'm just going to leave them dangling in that area and now turn my attention to running the cables from the throttle and the display right starting off with a throttle cable that exits here I'll try and just move that slightly up out the way of the um, cam run it up there I wouldn't I wouldn't exit the angle of this cable so sharp that it might you know put a kink and damage the cable so you can sometimes slip a, a cable tie in here and here I'm just going to put the camera down and cable tie that in place there you go I don't know if you can see that guys so I've got the cable exiting out not too sharp of an angle because I don't want to damage the cable I can still access and read the uh, gears uh, curving it around up here to near where the screen starts right so that leaves us with two pretty long cables one of those is coming from the display and the other one is this cable from the throttle what I like to do is feed it round past like the head tube leave a little bit of slack and then I will I'll leave a bit of slack and I'll cable tie it onto the existing brake cable that's routed through the frame so there you go then guys that's this cable um, plenty of slack for turning the handlebars and just securely mounted Securely mounted here, and then I'm going to start running the rest of the cables now. Right, I buy these. These don't come in the kit, but these are these are a self-adhesive sort of cable holder that I use to save myself putting cable ties around the top tube because I don't like as much as possible covering the whole tube. So what I'll do is I'll mount these underneath the frame. I'll mount these underneath the frame here, and I'll run the cable up underneath this tube. I'll stick these self-adhesive um, sort of cable mounts along the top tube and run it along here and again I'll stop just before this corner of the frame triangle um, so then I can start doing the controller so I'm just going to stick on maybe four or so along this top tube underneath to save me putting like ugly cable ties on this top tube. Everything's run to this corner of the frame triangle Got the throw and display coming off here and all the excess cable. Got the e-bike battery and the uh, hub wheel cables there. So now we are ready to start talking about mounting the um, controller. Right guys, so I'm going to fit the uh, controller onto the battery now. Like I mentioned before, I prefer to fit these externally. I'm just going to bring you in for a closer look because these tops of these battery cases are not always, well they're not completely flat. So that determines the way that I fit the adhesive tape that I use. I'll bring you in to show you what I mean. Right, so when that sits on top of there, there is a little bit of movement this way, up and down. Some battery types might be different side to side. I will mount adhesive tape to, there's obviously a curve this way, so what I'll do, I'll put a strip of adhesive tape here and here and I'll probably put two layers to build it up slightly and then when it's peeled off I'll gently bring it in and just press it down and that is it it's not particularly heavy um, it's not a place where it's going to get scratched, bashed too much it's pretty well out of the way so what I'm going to do now is yeah, you take this off and put a couple of strips of adhesive tape here and here right, that's the first layer, I prefer to double it up so it's a bit thicker so I'm just going to peel first layer away and come in come in with a second layer so that's a nice little build that I take off the curve of the battery and it will I've never ever had a problem with one falling off 
I've never had a problem with water ingress mounting a controller externally. Obviously common sense dictates that you wouldn't ride the bike underwater or through you know ridiculous amounts of water. It's just a bit of common sense guys really. Trim that up a little bit. And that's it. A bit tricky to peel. That is ready. That is ready to fit on the bike. A couple of strips. Righty, righty. You only get one chance to do this. Well, you can always just take the tape off if you get it wrong, sort of the end of the world. Cable's obviously exiting out this back end here. Now, just it's pretty much just trying to do it by eye and by feel. I'll try and bring the controller in close to the top tube so it doesn't stick to the battery immediately. And I'll just slowly move it into place and get it as straight as I can. By hand, by eye. And I think about there. I'll just give it a little press down. And that's it. As you can see now, we're getting to the stage where everything's in position, we're moving towards connecting all these cables. And what I normally do, to be fair, is do a, a, soft, a soft install now, just connecting all the cables and making sure the bike comes on. And then, as long as everything works, I do all the cable tied in and sort this whole bunch of mess out. So, yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do now, is just connect everything up together and Check the bike powers on. Right, as, as expected, there was another part that I should have listed in the beginning. Obviously this comes with your kit anyway. It's the little connector block for the hub cables and phase wires. Right. This little uh, connector block will be used to join up these cables when I find them. Green, blue and yellow. So you'll have the ones coming, ones coming off the back wheel. So I'm going to start with the green. Just go colour to colour on this one guys, nice and simple. Green to green. And tighten the nut down a bit so it doesn't fall off. All right, there you go, the nut. I'll get the nut on enough so I can move on to the next cables. Right, so yeah, as I was saying, green to green. Uh, it doesn't matter what order you do it in, as long as you've got the colours colour coded. Doesn't matter where they go in the block. The blue cables, just screw it on a few turns by hand. And finally, the other cable. Try and make sure the you know the rest of the cable isn't too tangled up in any of the other mess. So there you go. And just come in with your pair of pliers, give it a few turns, nick it up. If you want to be super anal about it and use a socket set, that's totally down to you, but that's absolutely fine. Then we've got the lid that goes on, protects obviously all the cables. And there you go, totally done. The power cable for the battery XT60 connector, I won't touch that till last. Also, I forgot to mention whilst you're doing this, Make sure the battery is switched off over at the far, on the other side opposite the key. You've got an on-off switch, make sure the battery is switched off. The plugs are pretty obvious. I mean, you might look at this and feel a bit intimidated, but if you look at the plugs coming off... So, this other plug that's coming off the, um, off the hub wheel, if you just look at the shape and size of the other plugs, there's only one that's going to fit. Yeah, you can't really, can't really go wrong with these plugs. They've either got, you know, four pins, six pins, they're all a set shape. You can't plug the wrong thing into the wrong thing, I don't believe. Um, this one off the hub wheel, you've got a little little tab there which you just push down, click through there. That's the back wheel completely wired up. Now that just leaves the display and throttle, which if I untangle this mess. It might all look a mess at the moment, but trust me, it'll come together absolutely fine. Like I said, count the amount of pins you've got, See that's got five, there's only going to be one 
thing that it fits into and it has got a little notch um, so you can't fit it the wrong way around there you go finally you've got a free pin which I believe is a throttle and if we just look through here it's two pin three pin well no it's not that one tell a lie so you can't do it wrong struggling to find the throttle one myself now I'm doing it on camera they're all brake sensors, oh, it'll be this one this will be the throttle coming off the controller with red, black and white cables that's it now what I'll do at this point is I'll plug the battery in push the two XC60s together I'll make sure nothing's near the back wheel just tuck things out of the way um, I don't know if this is the safest way to do it, but at this point I'm going to try At this point I'm going to try flicking the battery power on and putting the power on the bike See if the throttle should work at this stage here This is the way I do it, obviously be careful you're not going to catch any cables in the back wheel at this stage where it's As you can see not quite done tidily, but this is just the way that I work I'm going to come around this side, flick the battery on Hold the power button on the handlebars and the screen has come on. Little and that's it. Um, so at this stage I'm going to put the kettle on, make myself another cup of tea because it's pretty hot out here. Tidy up this bunch of mess of cables. All right, I'll start doing a little bit of housework and maintenance with the cables to be fair to start with. Start trying to make sense. I don't want too much excess, so I'll probably gather some of them up and bunch them together. Try not to bend the cables too tightly, but you are going to end up with a lot of excess usually. You've got to do something with it, so I'm going to start off by bunching these cables together. I wasn't going to have too many cables to put anywhere. Put it tight enough to keep them together, not neat and tidy, but not so much that it. You know, not so much that it damages the cables. So, got the throttle wires there. Let's move them out of the way. Now you've got these cables. What I like to do actually, with the cables coming out of the controller, what I like to do, the cables coming out of the controller, I like to kind of bunch them all together so they exit out nice and tidy. this kind of thing, I might even put two on I just think it keeps everything nice and neat as you can see here Cable tied, a couple of cable ties. Snip a bit more off of that one. A couple of cable ties in, a couple of cable ties in here just for the wires exiting out the uh, controller are nice and tidy. Let's pop that out of the way. Now I'm just going to kind of cable tie some of this up a little bit. Just going to come in. Don't want to, I don't want to fold any cables to the point where it actually affects the integrity of the cable. So I'm just loosely curving some cables around just trying to compact them a little bit without causing damage just tidying things up, being careful of what you're doing give that a little squeeze that's enough I think so that's my initial tidying up phase of the cables. I want to bunch them all together so they're all fit in a smaller controller bag. As long as it holds it all together to get in the controller bag, that's what we're after. The other important tip that I wanted to mention is if you want to look double hard whilst you're building your bike and impress people, get yourself a set of floral scissors. So thanks to my mum for lending me them. I usually find an aftermarket controller bag because I don't like the big bulky ones that come with the kit myself. Um, have a play around so you can find. I don't think they sell these anymore. I can't seem to get hold of these ones. I prefer this size. You get two zips so you can zip it around the cables a 
bit tidier, but this is about the size that you want to start looking at buying. Much smaller than the original, it's just to hide the cable, so I'm going to show you that now. Right, next step is to have a cup of tea and appreciate all the hard work you've done so far. Almost at the finishing stages now, so hopefully I'll be blessed with a nice little ride in the beautiful sunshine today. Right, apologies, but I think the battery went flat on the camera. I missed a little bit of me just basically I'm trying to shoehorn the cables into this bag. It's a really fiddly job, there's no amazing way of doing it, it's just getting these zips closed off as much as you can. It's just super fiddly really. I'm not going to get the zip all the way done up. It's covering the majority of the cables and that is a bike finished. I've got to go through the controller settings now, I'm going to do that, just double check it's all still working. Right, I'm going to go through the display settings, I'm just going to pop this Amazon Prime envelope there just so we can actually see what we're doing. Oh god, look at this hooligan. Trying to get some work done. What do you think you're doing, mate? Going down my street like that. Bloody hooligan. <laughs> Gonna have to have words with these hooligans down the street. How you doing, mate? You right? Here he is. You right? Busy, busy. You right? Good man. Good to yeah. see you, mate. Yeah, you too. So dim, isn't it? It's hard to tell, it probably is coming out, isn't it? Sorry guys, we're just having major. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's you can't, so sunny. Can't can't see, I can see your reflection in it. Right, that's fine. Let's put a glass on so I don't scare yeah. everyone. Right, so I'm just going to press the on button. And when I press that, I'm going to press the up and down arrow at the same time immediately after switching on. This takes you straight into the settings menu. First one with the green arrow is limit, speed limit. There's no point adjusting that because 72 is already the max kilometers an hour, which I believe is about... 43 mile an hour so I'm going to come down with a downward arrow second option down is wheel diameter I'm going to press the on button adjust that to 29 inch because this is a 29 inch bike obviously if you're 27.5 or whatever else you can press the on button again to set that units on zero is kilometers an hour I prefer miles an hour being in Britain change that to that that is it I don't fuck with anything else all the rest of this isn't going to do anything particularly fancy there's not really anything I find particularly useful in the rest of these. You're just going to mess the bike up and it might potentially not run. So yeah, only mess with them. Yeah, just mess with the top three settings. Max speed, don't need to touch. I'll go up to that to prove to you now. It won't go up past 72 kilometers an hour, which is about 40, 43, something like that. So I tested that out by taking the 2000 watt tandem down a big hill and I couldn't get over 43 mile an hour. But probably not a bad thing, so I had no brakes. So that is all good. Switch it off. Now we see we've got miles per hour on the screen. It's set a 29 inch wheel, so the speed will be accurate. And this bike is good to go. Good to go. The only thing left to do, which I think I've covered in part one anyway, or part two, make sure the brake calipers adjusted in and out. I've done that in one of the previous videos. The derailleur might need a slight bit of adjustment because you might find the gears clicking where you put the different wheel in. You can look how to do this quite easily on YouTube. I don't bother myself. I've got a good relationship with the guys at my local bike shop. I go down there, they charge me next to nothing. It's done in literally two minutes if they're not busy. Really simple to do. So you've got a slight click on the gears, just the brakes. And other than checking everything's tight, it's good to go. I mean, which bike do you want to take out today? <laughs> this is exciting. Yeah. I mean, so uh, yeah, well, to be honest, Today's ride is probably going to go on Andy's channel, so I know most of you probably subscribed already. If you're not, I'll leave a link. I know most of you will be. We're going to go and have a blast on this. I'm going to wrap this up here for the end of part three on this how-to series of building e-bikes. Go and have some fun. Yeah. The, yeah, this bike and the other bikes I build do end up for sale on my Facebook page. You can see a link in the description. They are, all, are awesome bits of kit. You can see the amount of effort I put into building these things up. Yeah, these builds are amazing. Like. Honestly, I'm always, always shocked when I come around and I'm like, I see these builds and how good they look. Like with the black controller and everything else. And yeah, it's just not something that you can just buy out of the shop. <laughs> Hooligan. Well then guys, that is it for today. I'm going to go out and have a laugh with Andy now. Check out his channel for today's ride video. I'll leave a link in my build video. Down below. Down below. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you guys have hope you guys have enjoyed this build series. It seems to have taken off really well. I hope it helps you build the kits. And I do, I do, I've got to say, you've got to go with Andy Kirby for the kits. It's my preference. I trust that the battery cells and the quality of the kits decent. 
You can go and get an MTX wheel anywhere. You never know what hub motor it's got. You never know what cells are going to be in the battery. I always get it from Andy because I, I, I know I can build in confidence knowing it's a quality bit of kit. Had very, very, very little issues. Like I said, maybe a controller overheating, but if you follow the tips that I said, shouldn't be an issue. So anyway, if you're not subscribed, as 90% of the people watching my video aren't, please subscribe. Helps me to do bigger and better projects. So leave us a like and a comment, and I'll see you guys in the video soon. Take it easy.